there are at least four holes already right here from the carpenter bees. So we're going to try to get those filled. Welcome back everybody to our property down here in Kentucky. We are working on finishing up stage one of our RV shelter and it's looking pretty good. You can see right here we've got a little bit of the roof yet to finish before we can start the next section on the awning. So we're going to work on that today. Come along and enjoy all that we're doing. This is a great place, some of the best land God has created. It's beautiful here. When we left you last time in construction down here in Kentucky, the ends of, I guess that would be the northwest side, we left uh, a full piece off each of the gable ends off. We were not able to get that done because we were finishing up at night, but it was enough to cover the uh, trusses. And that's what I wanted to make sure is the trusses were covered. So we came back, and this time it wasn't Angel, but it was Joel and I. And we covered the gable ends with the flashing. I think we did a real good job here. And you can't see, most of this is just quickly going over, covering up the trees, cutting down the branches that are in the way. In fact, this tree is just going to go. It does not look healthy, and we're going to have to put up a new sign anyway. Instead of don't feed the bears, it's going to have to say something about uh, don't eat the copperheads. When we got down here, we realized some other problems. This had only been up a month. Angel and I put it up and we found that the carpenter bees were already burrowing. They, we found at least six holes where they had started in this brand new wood. It was actually pretty depressing, but we found a solution, I think, and I'm going to show it to you. I think this is a great solution that allows us to not necessarily use chemicals, but we could on this uh, untreated wood and we're gonna make it so it's good. Here you're gonna see uh, us using a what's called a nibbler. This is a Harbor Freight nibbler and it's a new product that they just came out with and uh, honestly I'm real happy with it. I've tried using uh, shears or snips, tin snips. I've used them a lot but uh, I like I like this piece of equipment. In fact, I've used it a lot since this first time uh, a month ago. Of course, this is pretty much the first time I've used it, so I'm still getting used to how to use it, finagle, and get it to cut around corners. The order of assembly here does not necessarily mean that's the order the videos are in. We actually poured the concrete for the awning, which will be in the next video, before we finish this roof up because that was our primary goal. We knew we wanted to get this done, but we also wanted to give the time for the concrete to cure just in case we did have time to 
finish assembling the building, which we didn't, but uh, we probably could have, but we ran into problems with the bugs, so we couldn't quite do that. And if you're wondering, it did rain. It always rains. Except this last trip it didn't. That's okay. It kept things cool. You could still work on it. No problem. As long as you don't mind working in the rain. On a steel roof. This is a lot of hard work. And some of these screws on the steel roof did not want to screw in. I found out later that it's best to carry a hammer with me and tap a hole with the screw first instead of trying to actually screw them in, which is what I did on the entire roof here. I lost so many screws on the ground it wasn't even funny. The roof pitch does not look precarious from down here, but it is a 712 pitch and you cannot just walk on it. I actually had to put uh, blocks in the screw holes and that way I could walk up it. You'll see here in just a minute what we could do. It rained most of the day today and Probably not all that safe bringing you guys up here with me. But I haven't shown you up here yet. We're just wrapping up the finishing touches on the gable ends. And that's why uh, I was cutting this special so we could check and see if the angles are right so we have a good overlap. Okay. This is what it looks like from up here. And Joel just said dinner time. Okay, I'll be down shortly. I don't know if it's done raining or not. It cannot decide what we're doing. So you can see how far down this is. I'm not one of those persons who are afraid of heights, but I still wonder how somebody could do this every day. I'm not a huge fan of climbing up here on my knees, which I think is the hardest part, but some people do it and they do a good job. I can appreciate all those who do work on roofs and construction. Without them, we wouldn't be living in our nice fancy houses. The extra on the gable end, I was able to trim off using the nibbler. It just was able to follow the metal edge and it did no problem on that. There are at least four holes already right here from the 
carpenter bees. So we're going to try to get those filled. You were probably wondering why we were burning the wood. Well, that is why we have these carpenter bees and other insects that have decided they want to make home in our brand new structure, less than a month old. But we can't have that because carpenter bees will hollow out the two by fours the long way and they will become extremely fragile. Not to mention other problems too. So, to keep the insects off, we are charring the wood. And I think it's gonna work. Not to mention that this looks awesome. The burned look is a great way to stain wood without having uh, any stain, any liquid, anything like that. Just use the torch and it comes out really nice. I picked up this torch at Harbor Freight and it was only $29 or $39. Then we went to Ace and actually got a longer hose and it gave us like a 10 foot, which made it much nicer for what we're doing. Glad we were able to get that. This has worked out really well. I am thoroughly impressed. I take it back and forth with me from Ohio to Kentucky and back. It's useful all the way around for lots of things. It's even really good and what it's really made for is killing weeds in your driveway or other places where you don't want to use chemicals like uh, Roundup or any other type of glyphosate. Works great for that. You just uh, cook them. Doesn't take long and the weeds die instantly. I am really glad that I had Joel down here with me for the few days. He worked really hard. I didn't even know that he was doing this part. I guess I am just oblivious at times. But he went and coated these also with a diesel fuel and oil mixture. Honestly, this was not in our plans at all. This came about because of what was happening. and. I was hoping that we could start building the awning and we got the concrete poured but this really hindered us. But I had to do what it took because if we can stop them it's going to be a lot better than replacing boards down the road. We are on our way to fill up our propane tank and I kind of had an accident while working on there. The great stuff exploded all over me and I've got to shave. So next time you see me, I won't be wearing this. And what do you think of Joel's cool walking stick he made? Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Love to see you back. Take care and God bless.